A Warning for Meditators I hope that by explaining my experience with practicing mental cultivation, pavana bati bati, you will observe the causal links that culminated in the meditative samadhi incident and adapt them to your own practice in a way befitting your personality. If you were to meditate and your mind, jitta, gets a taste of calm, you experience an extremely deep and refined tranquility, or your meditative calm persists for so many days that it turns into an immaterial meditative absorption, arupachana, you must have a method of extracting yourself from the meditative absorption prepared in advance. If you, as a practitioner, lack a foundation of wisdom, you will surely drown in arupachana until your dying day. You won't have any means of extricating yourself from the meditative state. There is a widespread belief that once the jitta enters a state of calm, wisdom will arise. This is untrue. Obviously, those who promote this view have no experience with refined states of meditative tranquility. Their senseless words have led many people to wrong understanding. A single person with wrong views can lead hundreds of thousands of others to have wrong views. Once wrong view has arisen, it becomes the cause of wrong thought. The speech, action, and livelihood that sprout from the root of wrong view will all be wrong as well. Similarly, the efforts expended in various tasks, the establishment of mindfulness, sati, and the practice of meditation will all be wrong. It is like a bag of counterfeit money. While it resembles legitimate money, you cannot take it to be so. Fake money will always be fake. Likewise, as long as wrong views lurk deep in your mind, your mind will forever have wrong views, micha titi. Consequently, it will be difficult to reform yourself. Your foolishness and irrationality will unwittingly develop into wrong views, micha titi. Because you mistakenly believe your wrong views to be right views, you will encounter many problems. Thus, I wish to impart this food for thought for the determined practitioners out there. Use your discretion wisely and in a way befitting your resolve to walk in the footsteps of the Buddha and the many holy ones, Arya Bukala. You must study the historical accounts of the holy ones so that you understand how they each started their practice. What methods, Ubaya, did they employ that led them to the universal truth, Satchadama? You must adopt and tailor your views to those methods in order to develop samatiti, or views that are correct and righteous. These right views will be the platform upon which other right views congregate. If you lay the proper foundations of Dhamma practice from the start, the rest of your training will follow that correct trajectory. Everything will progress smoothly and effortlessly. This is what is meant by one truly being one's own refuge. As someone who is rational, you will be capable and decisive. Thus, it will truly be makā makāyāna tasana visuti, knowing and seeing the path to purity. Before you travel to an unfamiliar destination, you must study the map well. Regardless of the many offshoots and convoluted paths, you must recognize and understand the main course in order to follow it accurately. Your map must be aligned in the right direction. You must have tools like a bright light on hand, and you must travel with caution. If you are thoroughly versed on your prescribed course, you are guaranteed to reach your destination. The practice of mental cultivation is the same. Practitioners must study and understand the principles of samatiti, or wisdom aligned with the truth, because this is where practice begins. If you misinterpret the meaning of samatiti, it will immediately transform into michatiti. If this happens, you will unwittingly understand things incorrectly. You will mistakenly assume wrong views to be right views. Your practice will immediately encounter problems. Your desire to attain enlightenment will be left unfulfilled. Thus, before you dive into practice, you must be fully prepared with mindfulness, wisdom, faith, and effort. Wisdom is the mind's light. Once your wisdom is thoroughly steeped in reason, your decision-making will be correct, swift, and in time to matter. You won't have any hesitations or doubts about practice methods, like what is proper or what is improper, or right or wrong. This is how practitioners follow in the Buddha's footsteps in the correct manner. You are one who is embarking on a journey. If you don't understand how to practice, you must study with those who are knowledgeable. That way, you will grow confident that your practice is correct and true. 
it is most critical that you are careful not to ask questions of those who are lost. You are also lost. The person pointing out the way is just as lost as you are. It'll turn into the blind leading the blind. You won't make it when the blind lead one another. There is nothing that can help that type of situation. Consider it bad luck. One day in the future, you might encounter someone with good eyesight who will undoubtedly guide you to shore. With strong wisdom, it isn't difficult to seek out a teacher who is practicing correctly. You must train yourself to be righteous, tamma tipataya, and use reality as your touchstone. Whenever someone presents the Dhamma to you, you must instantly deploy your mindful wisdom to assess its rationality. In this way, it will not be difficult to select that which is righteous, tamma tipataya.